there's been a, a lot of reporting recently about a couple of unfortunate incidents on flights, uh, one from Paris, one from New York. The DGCA has spoken about this extensively. Uh, you know, uh, is there a sense that perhaps Air India needed to have done things differently, perhaps address this issue more publicly or uh, try and work with the passenger who was affected more quickly? Well, I think as we said at the time, uh, you know, th there are things that we didn't do as well as we should have and, and lessons that we've learned. Uh, one of the, the key things is uh, reporting uh, incidents that happened. Perhaps there was a culture before where things we tried to resolve internally rather than um, you know, reporting perhaps uh, so that they can be taken up by other folk. Um, there are other things that we've done, clearly a review of our alcohol policy, uh, which frankly the policy was very much in line with what other carriers do, uh, but educating our staff on how to identify people that are becoming intoxicated and, and, and deal with that. Uh, and also technology. Uh, Air India, as I've you know, previously mentioned, had underinvested in, in a number of things, including technology over the years. And so many processes were manually based with all the, the risks and, and delays thereof. And so deploying more modern technology is, is clearly part of the solution. Yeah. Um, I, I, I would like yeah. to say, though, yes. that you know, not a day goes by without us receiving some uh, report uh, from, from crew on you know, behavior on board the aircraft. And, and so much of it uh, stems from people consuming alcohol before they even get on the aircraft or, or them being upset when they're not continued to serve alcohol on board the aircraft. And in the vast majority of cases, the people that suffer the abuse, be it verbal, sometimes physical, are our crew. And so we've seen over the course of the past few years, many airlines, and, and, and IATA generally, call out the fact that there is a degradation of uh, behavior on board aircraft. And so this call, uh, this, this incident that we, we experienced, very regrettable, clearly these things we could have done better, but I think it's, it's a wake up call for the industry generally, and, and for travelers generally, that there is a standard of decorum and, and behavior that is required in public places, including on aircraft. And uh, I think it behoves all of us to, to raise our game, here and here included. It's difficult to uh, actually ensure that that takes place. The passenger is out of, uh, you know, you don't control the behavior of the passenger. You can only tell the passenger what is correct once they're on board that aircraft. But um, how does one start with that process of educating passengers and what is appropriate and what isn't? I, I think we, we have to be clear on, on in, in our communication publicly. I think when people do cross the line, we have to hold people to account. Uh, clearly, there, there's gradations of, uh, of how we hold people to account. But I think also as, a, as an industry and, and as a regulator, uh, we need to take action. Sure. Uh, in, in India, there is a very complicated process to, to suspend people from traveling, uh, which is quite unusual uh, compared to most of the world. And I think perhaps there should be a little bit more discretion left to the airline to unilaterally take decisions yeah. to deny someone carriage right. uh, when they have, particularly when they've threatened crew, uh, when they've threatened other passengers. Uh, I, I think as, as a society, we perhaps need to take a look at this. Yeah.